Hey everybody, welcome back to MMA Talk with Michael Hutchinson. We're rebranding the show to have the weekly in front of it rather than having it called Tuesday MMA Talk because, let's be honest, I can't stay on a schedule. So some days Tuesdays work, some days Wednesdays. Obviously today we're posting this on Wednesday. Sometimes we're live and sometimes we're not. Today isn't a live show because we're going to do something a little different. We have four guests on today's show, all who are fighting this Friday at Titan FC 39. I'll give you the list right now. First off, we had Pat Bam Bam Healy joining us to talk about his fight against Jay-Z Cavalcante this Friday. And then we have Andre Harrison, the current Titan FC featherweight champion. He joins us to talk about his fight against Delvson Ribeiro. At Titan FC 39 also about wanting to fight at UFC New York which I think is like UFC 205 he wants to fight at the event in New York though badly so if he gets a win maybe he'll get that chance he talks more about that in the interview we also have Diego Lima and David Machado both of them are fighting each other at Titan FC 39 their interviews are great we talk a lot about the events about each fighter. Let's get into those interviews now. Here is Pat Bam Bam Healy. All right, joining us on the show, he is fighting for the Titan FC lightweight title at Titan FC 39. It is Pat Bam Bam Healy. Pat, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Hey, thank you and really appreciate you having me on the show. Hey, no problem, man. So you have a chance to reclaim the Titan FC lightweight title. Obviously, the last time when you did have it, you missed weight, were stripped of the title, and then you ended up losing to Rick Hahn. Do you think this is a sort of redemption fight for you to get that title back? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, things kind of unraveled in my uh, weight cut for that fight. Uh, it's the first time I've ever missed weight, and it was very embarrassing and hard to handle uh but you know i i still think i won that fight i i can't believe like i watch that fight all the time still because it drives me crazy but you know i thought i did more than enough to win that fight and uh so yeah i've got a pretty big chip on my shoulder uh going into this one to get my title back mm -hmm. and do you think that because of that judge's decision, you're going to be looking to finish this fight or put a stamp on this next fight? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I've really been working hard uh, in the gym and kind of focusing my training on the finish. Like, I've uh, been doing a lot more drilling than I usually do, kind of like, a, you know, chain chains into submission, like chain wrestling into submission and stuff like that. So I feel pretty confident with my attacks right now. And, you know, I, I really want to make a statement in this one and and go after the finish and not play it safe. I think in my last fight, I played it pretty conservative to get the win. And, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of uh, left left a bad taste in my mouth. So uh, I really want to get after this one and, and finish the fight. Mm -hmm. And you're fighting a guy who's ultra also a grizzly veteran in Jay-Z Cavalcante. Is it different fighting a guy that is also a veteran who has a ton of cage experience uh, instead of a guy who's young, new, exciting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can pretty much figure Jay-Z's been in just about every position in a fight and, and seen plenty of ups and downs, so... I don't expect him to get rattled if things aren't going his way. Um, I think that's one thing you can take an advantage of in the younger fighters and less experienced guys is, you know, sometimes you get a guy in a bad position and he kind of just will shut down. And I know Jay-Z won't do that. So uh, it, it certainly makes me a lot more focused. If I am going to get this finish on, I need to do it kind of like systematically and break him down and, and get dom like dominate position to, to finish him. Mm -hmm. And did you see this fight coming at some point in your career? Because it seems like uh, that eventually you two would cross paths. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I thought it would happen a lot sooner, to be honest. I thought we'd beat at Strike Force or uh, something like that. I mean, we've been in a couple of the same organizations, uh, even in the UFC at the same time. So, um, you know, I think we both thought this fight would happen sooner, but, you know, it's great that it's for a title and a five round fight. And I think it'll be, you know, a very exciting fight for the fans. And you mentioned Strike Force and the WEC. Do you think that when it comes to MMA right now, that there's kind of less excitement because there aren't those major organizations around the UFC? Because Strike Force, we've seen, has had fighters that are doing super well in the UFC. The WEC basically took over the lightweight divisions. Do you think the sport is different now because there aren't those major players surrounding the UFC? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but, you know, I think with what Bellator is doing right now and having, you know, the money of Viacom behind them, uh, they're certainly building a, a big name for themselves. Uh, I don't know if anybody will ever, you know, work themselves up to, you know, how big the UFC is, yeah. but, uh, you know, I think Bellator and, you know, I like kind of what the UFC, the UFC seems to be using, you know, things like Titan and uh, Legacy and, and stuff to kind of build build up guys and use them kind of as like a minor league, uh, which I think is a good thing too. Um, you know, you want, I don't know, I, I think it's good to have like that major, uh, uh, like the UFC on top where, you know, it gives some, everybody something to strive for and, uh, you know, to reach that level. And we actually just saw recently a uh, former Titan welterweight champion, Bilal Muhammad, was moved up to the UFC after his title win. Do you think that with this title win, that because Titan has kind of acted like a feeder league for the UFC, that a win would get you back to the UFC? Uh, I think it could. Uh, I think... Uh... A five-round decision uh, won't do it. I think it has to be a finish, and it has to be an exciting fight. Uh, and I'm trying not to focus on that too much. You know, I'm, Titan treats me great. They're, um, I think, a great organization. I really, I really like Lex, who you know is the COO, and uh, Jeff. You know, are great guys. So I'm really happy with Titan and. Uh, you know, uh, obviously the UFC is still my final goal, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with Titan and, and you know, I'm happy fighting here uh, for a while if, that, if that's what it will be. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to freak you out with this, but in August, it'll be 15 years since you made your pro debut. Now, that's a long <laughs> time of fighting. If you could sort through all of your memories, the good and the bad, what would you say is your most memorable time when it comes to fighting? Um, you know, I've been pretty lucky to do some pretty great things, uh, you know, not only in, in fighting, but, you know, kind of what fighting's brought me. I mean, my, my ultimate memory isn't a fight. It was getting to go out to China and uh, staying at, at an athletic university where some of the guys did MMA, but it was majority of a, a, what's called Sonda out there, but it's like kickboxing with throws, where like what Kung Lee used to do, the San Shao. Um, but getting to, I stayed out there for six weeks uh, in the middle of China, Xi'an, uh, and, and trained uh, like probably 120 athletes and then kickbox, you know, learn from them in the kickboxing. And, uh, you know, that was just such an incredible experience. So many people say so many things about China and they've never been there and they have no idea what it's really like. It, it just was great to, to get to go there and, and realize that, you know, it's not this, uh, you know, communist devil that everybody thinks it is. It's, you know, just full of great people and regular people just like us. And, you know, there's not really a shed of communism anywhere in that country. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a really cool experience. How did you end up getting that opportunity? Uh, there was a promotion legend FC um, who was running out there and the, and they did kind of that Southeast Asia 
and uh, they had contacted Team Quest uh, to to bring out some guys to uh, train Chinese fighters in wrestling and grappling, and uh, I, that's where I was at the time, and I was teaching a lot, so it worked out perfect, and, and it was kind of a short notice thing, like, hey, can you go to China in three weeks? And uh, at the time, I was very uh, liquid where I could just pick up everything and go. So uh, it worked out pretty good for me. Wow. That, yeah, that sounds like a really cool time. I'm going to let you go now. Uh, but one more thing. If you had to predict how this fight's going to turn out, you said earlier that you wanted to finish. What's your ideal way of finishing Jay-Z Cavalcante? Uh, my ideal way would be just to walk out there and knock him out real quick. Uh, but... You know, I'm I'm prepared, uh, and I think I'll wear him down in in the fourth or fifth round, uh, catch him by submission, probably rear naked choke. Nice. Well, I look forward to that, and hopefully you do end up getting the finish and then maybe moving your way up to the UFC and reclaiming back your Titan FC lightweight title. Thanks for joining us, Pat, and good luck in your fight. Hey, I appreciate it a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on. No problem, man. Take care. All right, with me right now is the Titan FC featherweight champion, Andre the Bull Harrison. Andre, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. How's everything with you? Everything's good, man. Finally getting some warm weather up here on the East Coast, Northern East Coast. So, so far, life's good right now. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, like I said in the opener, your nickname is the Bull. I asked Bilal Muhammad the last time I talked to him about his nickname. It's a very weird nickname, Remember the Name. I'm sure that you have a better story of how you got your nickname. So how did you get the bull as your nickname? <laughs> um, it, well, um, first off, I'm a Taurus. Um, okay. So because I'm a Taurus, I always had like a little fascination with bulls. And uh, my very first tattoo was a bull that I, I, you know, I got put on my arm. And so I just always ran with ran with that joking around. And then uh, my high school coach used to always say, um, you know, you get into tough position, you know, just be strong like a bull. And okay. so I used to always joke around and run with that. And then, um, you know, it just came natural, I guess. Nice. Because it's good that you have a natural nickname. Because I know a lot of fighters, they just give themselves a nickname. And it's not really natural. Mm. It's just something to stand out. Yeah. So right off the bat, I'm actually surprised that for this next fight, you're fighting in Titan FC. You're a perfect 12-0, and 0, and I would consider you a top featherweight at this point, yet you're still not in the UFC. So has the UFC reached out to you yet, or what's going on there? Um, they just told me to keep fighting. They didn't really you know, say anything specific or anything like that, but they just told me to keep fighting. Um, you know, but at this point in time, like, uh, I get asked that a lot, like, how come you're not there yet? How come you're not there yet? And if I wasn't in fight camp, I'd be focused on there and, you know, trying to figure out what I can do to get there. But being that I am in fight camp and I do have a, you know, a tough fight coming up with, you know, a tough guy, it, it makes no sense for me to, you know, discredit him by focusing on something that's not even in front of me. You know what I'm saying? I, right now, I'm just focused on my opponent. I'm focused on June 10th focus on Titan FC. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing right now. So can't really, can't really put too much emphasis right now on, uh, on UFC because, you know, I'm not there yet. It wouldn't make sense to waste time, brain power, and energy on that. Also, it makes sense because you actually need to focus a lot on this fight. There's a lot on the line. First of all, a possible UFC contract on the line. The fact that you need to keep your perfect record intact. And also, you're defending your title. So how much pressure is there on you for this fight? Um, I don't ever look at it like that where, you know, you put extra pressure on yourself. I don't think about, you know, an undefeated record. I don't think about a possible UFC contract or... I don't even think about the title, truth be told. In my mind, um, I, I just want to do, you know, I just set out a goal that's very, very simple. It's very easy for me. Is I think about my last performance, and in my mind, I want to have a way better performance than that. And um, that's always been my thing, going from fight to fight. If you think of yourself as a champion, and, you know, it kind of puts yourself like on a little plateau, and you're like, all right, well, I'm there. 
and you you know you you forget that you got to keep pushing yourself you got to keep doing things because although you have the title you know you got to keep going because other people want it you know so i got to push myself i can't be the same fighter that i was in my last fight because uh people may have watched that they may have figured out how to beat that on there so i have to do something between that fight and this fight to grow and become a better mixed martial artist you know and so my goal is always to be a, a better um better version of myself and go out there and perform to the best of my ability and i feel if i can do that then i can beat anybody mm -hmm. that's a very mature mindset for a guy who's only had 12 professional fights where do you think you learn that skill from um, I mean, even though, even though I've only had 12, 12 pro fights, at the end of the day, it's a one-on-one -on -one contest. It's me out there against one other person. And when it comes to terms of that, I've been doing that since I was in seventh grade because I grew up wrestling. It's you out there, it's you, your opponent, and the referee, which is essentially what I'm doing now. And, um, you know, you'd be in tournaments and stuff like that, and, Anytime I, anytime I was in a tournament and I always been focused on the finals instead of the, you know, the first round, the second round, the quarterfinals, semifinals, it, it would never really end well. You know what I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. you, you hear the old slogan, take it one match at a time, take it one fight at a time. And it kind of just stayed with me. You know, I do the same thing now. When, I, when I'm in a fight, I have to think about each fight individually. I can't focus on... Um, who the top 20 featherweights are in the UFC and worry about how I would fight them and how it, because I have a top featherweight in front of me come June 10th. I need to worry about how to beat him and, you know, do things of that nature. And so, you know, that's pretty much where kind of, I grew up learning this. And does it kind of annoy you that not, not just the UFC, but other promotions as well, they like to focus on guys who do a lot of extracurricular activities when it comes to promoting themselves, trash talking. Do you think promoters should focus more on skill and pure MMA when it comes to picking up fighters and promoting fighters? Well, I mean, promoters have a different job than fighters do. So I understand for them, for promoters, they're looking to do exactly what their title entails. You know, they're looking for promotion. And so when you have a guy that can capture the attention of the audience and, you know, draw a lot of people in, he's more likely to get, you know, a bigger fight than other people that, who may not, you know, talk as much trash or do, you know, kind of wild outlandish things. And so, you know, I understand that part of it. It's just, you know, people are different, man. I, I have a different personality than other people. Um, to me, I, I like to crack jokes. I like to, you know, uh, you know, I'm sarcastic. That's, that's my whole personality. But as far as, like, talking trash and, you know, degrading somebody else, that's, that's really not my style. I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. And do you think Titan FC has done a good job in getting your personality over to people? Um, yeah, they, they definitely do their job in trying to get me, like, a lot of media mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of press going. So, yeah, they, they do good with that. Nice. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your opponent at Titan FC 39, Francisco Ribeira? What does he bring to the table? Um, he's, uh, he's a tough, he's a, first of all, he's a tough dude, has good, solid striking, he's a black belt in jits, uh, looks more like a counter striker and stuff, and, you know, he's definitely out there to fight, man, he throws, so, you got to be on your A game when you go with him. Yeah, and I talked about pressure earlier, now your last two fights were decision wins, is there any pressure to get the stoppage this time around, or do you not think about that when going into a fight? If, you know, if I'm out there and I have somebody hurt, I'll, I'm going to go for it. But I'm not looking to just go out there and start swinging for the fences in hopes that, you know, a shot lands and I put the person out. Like, I'm looking to fight my fight and do what I need to do to get the win. Um, I w would love to get the finish if I could possibly get it. But if it's not there, I'm not going to just start, you know, going out of control and just swinging for the fences. Uh, you know, that's, that's not me. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. Now we'll finish off on something that I know you must be thrilled about. MMA finally being legalized in New York. What was your reaction to oh, yeah. hearing that news? I was really, really happy, man. Like you said, and I, again, I really appreciate the, you know, the thoughts and the, and the support, but I really envision myself as one of the top featherweights, period. You know, um, not just in Titan, but just, like I said, overall. And so being at the UFC is coming to New York. 
I'm pretty sure they're going to be looking to sign some New York fighters because, you know, we can bring a, a big crowd to, you know, whether it's in the Barclays Center, whether it's in uh, Madison Square Garden, you know, wherever it is, we can bring a big crowd. And so, you know, being that it's there, I would love, love, love to get on that card. That would be, that'd be good to, you know, fight in your hometown finally and get everybody that's been wanting to come, you know, come and see you fight. You know, some people might not be able to make it to Miami or Washington or Alabama or, you know, some of the other places that I fought in. So this would be, this would be that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if I'm your agent, PR guy, or a part of your team, I would say go to the UFC after this fight and say, get me on that UFC 205 in New York, the uh, fight pass, prelim fight, anything to get on that card, because I think that would be a huge opportunity for you and a great way to show off local New York talent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, so hopefully you guys can get that done after this fight. Uh, thanks for the time, Andre. That's all I have for today. Good luck in your title fight, no defending your title at no Titan problem. FC 39. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. All right. All right, joining me now is Diego Lima, who fights for the vacant Titan FC welterweight championship at Titan FC 39. Diego, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, my friend. No problem. So this is your first fight in Titan FC. How did that deal come about, you fighting in Titan? Man, I was looking um, I was looking to fight in June, and, man, everybody else has been booked until, like, October, man. Everybody, it's either they say they were booked or there was a signing, you know. I reached out to pretty much everybody, and I just I needed a fight in June, man, because July and August is rough for me to fight because I have three kids and they go on vacation. And then I talked to Jeff, and he was right on, man. He, you know, Jeff, he, he takes care of business, man. We talked the first day. You know, the numbers didn't meet at first. And then, man, the next day, boom, we signed. He's like, I'll have you a fight tomorrow. Boom, next day, he's got me a fight. Nice. That's good to hear because I've talked to Jeff probably like three or four times now, done many interviews with him. And he seems like such a good guy and really easy guy to work with. So are you glad that you're in an organization with a guy like Jeff? Oh, definitely, man, definitely. He really went straight to business, man. He, he doesn't mess around, man. And it, what what I love about him, you know, he believed in me, man. You know, he believed in my training. Like, he, he knows who I train with, you know. He asked guys about me. He's like, man, this guy's a beast in training, huh? And so, man, he believed in me. And, man, I can't show, show them what I'm about, man. And one of the better things in Titan FC is it gives fighters a chance to move up to the UFC. And that's what happened with Bilal Muhammad, the former Titan FC champion. He's now in the UFC, meaning that his title is vacated and now you're fighting for the title. So does that add any added pressure to this fight? And are you prepared to go five rounds? No, definitely no added pressure, man. You know, I, I man, for some reason, I just had a feeling this was going to happen, man. I just, I just did, man. I don't know why I just had that feeling, man. So, you know, I'm not going to change anything in my training, man. I, I train to go five all the time, man. So I, I'll be ready to go, man. It doesn't really change much. You know, pressure is always going to be there. And, man, this is what I want, man. This is a, you know, be a world champion, man. This is a dream come true. And, man, I can't wait. I'll be ready. Nice. And there's a small narrative that I've heard so far about this fight. And it's the fact that, in your last two UFC performances, you were knocked out. Some people are questioning your chin. I find that kind of an annoying uh, narrative because of the fact that you've only been not really even knocked out twice. You've gotten TKO'd twice. Does that annoy you that people automatically think that a fighter's chin is shot, even though he's only been knocked down twice in how many fights? Oh, man, it, it does, man. It bugs the crap out of me, man. It really does, dude. You know, because they don't know what you're going through, man. You know, mentally and stuff, they don't really know anything. And, you know, that's what the first thing they do. Oh, he got knocked out two, oh, three times, you know. I, I Just like you said, like, I really haven't even been knocked out. You know, I got hit in the temple, and, you know, you lose your balance, and then, boom, the, the rest calls it, man. It's like, dude, I'm 27 years old, man. You know, I... <laughs> I really, I never spar and, and practice anymore. You know, I don't get hit in the head. It's like, dude, you know, give me a chance, man. You know, it's like, it's so stupid when people say that, man. Mm -hmm. And then, man, I just got to show it, man. You know, it's just, there's really no other better way to show it. You know, my last fight, I got hit a couple of times, but, you know, it didn't phase me. And, 
It is what it is, man. If they want to think that they can, you know, I hope Mashad doesn't judge me by that. If he comes forward with his hands down, man, he's going to go down. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, is it going to be a mistake if Machado comes out trying to headhunt? Definitely, man. Definitely, man. I, I, I've been listening to all his interviews, and that's what I've, been, what I've been seeing, that he's just going to try to back me up and come forward, man. I'm telling you, he better keep his hands, his hands up, man, because if I touch him, he's going to go down first. Nice. And I was actually going to ask you, I'll be talking to your opponent in a couple of minutes. Is there anything that you want to tell him, maybe a playful jab or two? <laughs> no man not at all you know we we know it's business man he you yeah. know he's been there he's, he's just like me man he's been there he's done that you know he knows my mistakes i know his mistakes there's really it's just gonna be see who's gonna be a better man that night man and we're gonna see what happens man i'll be ready i know he'll be ready and we're gonna put on a show man i i just know it and there's actually three title fights on that card, so you'll kind of be battling other fights for attention. How do you think you'll make yourself stand out from the others on that night? Listen, man, I'm going to show what I have, man. I have, man, I, I, I'm 100% this fight. Like, there's no mental issue. There's nothing going on on me, you know. This fight is the fight that I show what I'm truly capable of, you know. All my UFC, in the house, I, I did great in the house, you know, but all my UFC fights, you know, I don't do anything I did in training. Even a fight I won, you know, it was a horrible performance. And, you know, my last fight, I just had to get on a winning board. So, you know, I played it safe, man. I took the guy down and, you know, I just played it safe just to get that win, man. Just coming off two losses, you know, that's not that's not good at all. So this fight, there's no air to pressure, man. There's, you know, I'm, my mind is clear. This fight is really where I can show what I do in training, man. And I'm really excited about that, man. I just want to perform like I do in training. And I feel like this is the fight to do it, man. I'm just excited, man. I'm really, I'm beyond excited for this fight. Yeah, just hearing you talk about it, I'm kind of getting excited myself for the fight. You seem really, really passionate about this fight. Definitely, man. It's just my my past few years has been horrible, you know. All those performances, that, that really got to me, man. And I just needed a long break to regroup, you know, gather myself back. And, man, I found my passion in again. You know, I'm happy, you know. I'm happy doing everything. My weight's down now, you know. Everything changed and. Man, I, I can't, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I have one more thing, and then I'll let you go. Uh, what's it like balancing both family and fighting? Because recently Luke Rockhold talked about Chris Weidman saying, kind of saying that his family's a distraction, and the fact that Luke Rockhold's single makes him able to train more and not have to focus on a family. So as a guy who has a family, three kids, what do you think of that type of statement? <laughs> Man, um, I think he's an idiot, you know. If, if he's saying it gets in the way and stuff, that, that's an idiot thing to say, you know. He has, who knows, man, he has no idea, man. But the thing is, man, my, I've, been, um, I've been in this game for a little while now. And, you know, my wife, my, my wife is pretty much like me, man. She, she knows what I go through in camp. You know, my kids the same way. You know, I just, um, I, I have it down now, you know. It's like when I'm in camp, you know, they know, like, all my stuff comes first, you know. So we do that. There's still time for family, you know. It's just you train once in the afternoon, you're training at, at night, you know. You got the whole day with the kids and stuff. You just, you make time, man. Family is most important. Right? You just, you make time, you know. It's, it's, it doesn't get in the way and all that. For him to say that, that's just stupid, man. You know, they support you, man. That's what you work for. You know, they're always there for you. They know, especially like a guy like Chris Weidman, you know. I'm sure his kids know the stake. You know, his wife knows the stake. And it's just having somebody there, you know, like my wife, man, she's real supportive, man. And she she will ask me, hey, do you need a day off? You want me to take my kids to my mom's house, you know. So she's always doing that for me. And, man, you just got to balance it, you know. You have a good wife and – that's it. A good wife is the answer there. <laughs> yeah, and I think you've showed that you're able to balance that pretty well. I'm going to let you go now. Thank you for the time, Diego, and good luck in your fight at Titan FC 39. Man, thanks for having me. I really appreciate that, man. I'll be ready. No problem, man. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right, our last guest of the show joining me from Arizona fighting for the Titan FC welterweight championship, David Machode. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. 
No problem. So how are things right now out at the lab in Arizona? Hot, man. It's yeah. it's getting too hot out here for me. Yeah, it's starting to get summer, but things are good, you know. Everyone, we got a lot of fights coming up. Um, Bruce Leroy, uh, Alex Harris just got a nice fight, short notice. We've had a couple fights, and everyone's just getting in there and trying to get better every day, 1%. Nice. Well, while you're complaining about the heat, right now I'm up here in Canada and I'm doing everything but complaining about the heat. We've gotten snow for months and months, so maybe you should come up to Canada and enjoy our cool weather. Yeah, I'm from South Dakota, actually, so I'm more used to the cool weather than this, but my last trip to Canada didn't end up too well, so I'm going to try to stay away from there. <laughs> Well, I just talked to the man that you're fighting with at Titan FC 39 Diego Lima, and he said that he's heard things from both the general public and from you concerning his chin, that right now people are underestimating him being able to take a shot. I mean, I don't know what he heard from me. I was just, I, mean, I don't know, maybe I said something, but um, yeah, you know, his three losses in the UFC were all first round TKOs so I mean best case scenario for me would obviously be going there to put my hands on him and <laughs> finish him in the first round like that mm -hmm. well he also told me that he said it would be a mistake if you did try going head hunting trying to finish the fight but he also did add that he respects you as a fighter and that you two are going to put on a show yeah you know I feel the same way he likes to get in there and throw bombs and I feel like I kind of fight the same way. He likes to throw bombs and end up on top and try to beat people up from there. And I feel like that's kind of my game too. So I think it'll be a good time. We're both going to go in there and butt heads and see who falls. Yeah. It's going to be a really entertaining fight. Now let's talk a little bit about your life for the people that don't know you haven't followed your career can you tell them about your upbringing growing up wrestling your native background and how you got into the sport um yeah you know i was born in south dakota in pine ridge on the pine ridge indian reservation um that's basically where i lived all my life until i ended up going to college uh, i still go back there all the time and that's where i want to end up after i'm done fighting i just kind of Got to be down here now. But, yeah, I wrestled all through growing up, you know, in high school. I ended up going to college, um, wrestled for a couple of years in college. And I still, I'd always kind of known I was going to fight. I started fighting. I think I had my first fight when I was 15 at a the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a big deal. Like, I guess they say like 70 or 700,000 people go there every year. But it was pretty fun, like just a bunch of drunk bikers around, and it's they just placed out some mats, and so if you go out of bounds, the bikers are pushing you back in, and you're oh, fighting, wow. so it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and then after that, I had my first fight at 15, and had a good time, ended up winning real fast, and just knew I was going to... Uh, well, didn't know I was going to have a career, but figured it'd be something cool to do. So even whenever I was wrestling in college, I was still fighting, and I was just really doing it just to, you know, get better at fighting to be better for my career now. That's because I wasn't too into the too into wrestling in college. Like it was hard. It's hard on your body, and it just takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot of time. I was just trying to get my degree and and start fighting and working so now you yeah. said that then, wrestling does take a lot out of a fighter and we're seeing right now a lot of wrestlers who competed at the top level of wrestling they're getting into their later years in the ufc or just in mma in general and they're getting injured a lot do you think that some a bad part of growing up in wrestling is that it does add up a lot of injuries when in like kickboxing or jujitsu, they don't get injured as much. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard in wrestling. I think um, so. It it's hard on your body. You know, a lot of sports are hard on your body. Like if you played football, it's gonna be hard on your body too. But 
I think one of the things is that the mentality, like it's just the grind mentality. So it's just getting after it. Um, so it's every day you got to get in there and you're just beating your body down. You're just breaking yourself down basically every day. So even whenever you're hurt, you're like, oh, I got to get in. I got to stay after it. So a lot of times you're not training smart. You're just training hard. And that's something I've tried to kind of correct of myself <clears throat> now because I know in wrestling, it's like, oh, you're banged up. You're this, you're that. It's like, it don't, it really doesn't matter. You got to get back in there and you got to just keep grinding. Just keep, um, you know, just keep beating on yourself and just work through it. So that causes a lot of injuries. But then I think guys take that or they keep their, you know, if it worked for you all throughout college and on the world stage, then you're going to keep doing it in your next career, which, you know, for a lot of guys now is fighting. So it just keeps adding up, keeps adding up, just that grind, grind, grind. And you don't take any time off, you know, when you feel like they say, are you hurt or are you injured? Well, a lot of times when you're hurt and you don't take that time off, then it ends up that you're not hurt anymore and you're injured. So I think that's part of it is just the mentality that people bring in. So they're training so hard, and that's how they get to the top. That's how they got to the top. So they just keep training like that, but it ends up breaking themselves down. Mm -hmm. And I did an a article a while ago, and it broke down uh, the amount of injuries per fight camp. And the MMA lab actually had one of the fewest. Very little does uh, the fighters out of that camp get injured. Is there a focus in that camp about making sure that fighters are making sure that they aren't breaking themselves down like that? Because it sounds like you have a very mature approach to when it comes to training. I mean, I feel like, um, you know, our head coach Crouch, he's, all, he's on top of us all the time, making sure that we're staying healthy and kind of taking care of ourselves, you know, getting our um, physical therapy in or our chiropractic work in. But I feel like, I don't know, because I feel like we're always grinding. Maybe we just... <laughs> kind of don't pull out of fights as much because I know a lot of guys that get done with their fights and they, you know, they have to get MRIs on their knees and their shoulders. And, and I, for sure, there's a couple guys now that just got done fights, not, you know, within the last six months and they're really not going to be able to fight for a while because they ended up fighting with some pretty bad injuries. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it's not saying that we're any tough one else or anything. You know, fighters fight, and mm -hmm. if you don't fight, you don't make money. So, you know what you got to do. Yeah, it's an unfortunate side of the sport injuries because you either pull out and try to rest up, but then everybody complains about it, or you toughen up, as they say, do the fight, but you're injured going to the fight, so then you don't perform. Yeah, it's a tough. It's tough, but then. Like, like I said, you know, a big thing is you don't fight, you don't get paid. And it's not like, well, especially now, you know, I'm fighting on Titan. They're paying me better than anyone would. That wasn't a major promotion, but mm -hmm. it's not like I can just fight, you know, two or three times a year and be set like I would be able to in the UFC. And even then, you know, if you're fight. It's hard to get fights in the UFC mm -hmm. more than two or three times unless you're taking short notice fights. And a lot of times that's hard because you can't just train all year round for a fight because you're just breaking your body down. But if you're not getting those fights and you're not getting paid and it just makes things hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so for this fight against Diego Lima, you're fighting a guy who spent time at middleweight. And I looked at the height difference and the reach difference, and I guess even the weight difference. And he's a much bigger guy than you, but this is going to be a five round fight. So do you think you being the smaller fighter in this fight will give you an advantage? Or do you think you're going to have to compensate for the size difference with your skill? Well, I mean, I think the, you know, obviously I think my skills are better than him. I wouldn't really take too many fights where I don't think my skills are better than someone. I'm, Sure, he thinks the same thing, but I'm not feeling like I'm going to get in there and he's just going to muscle me around. I feel like anytime we get in the clinch or if I decide to go for a takedown, I should be able to get it. I should be 
the stronger man. I feel like I'm, you know, pretty strong at 70. I'm short. Obviously, he's tall. He's got the reach. But I don't think if we're locked up that he's just going to, you know, toss me around. And this fight could have easily taken place in the UFC, both of you just coming off from a small stint in the UFC. Do you think that there's a little bit of pressure in this fight, considering that both of you have the chance to put on an impressive performance, get a title in another organization, and have the UFC brass watching this fight? Uh, I don't really look at this pressure. I look at it as an opportunity. I think... Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I mean, that's how I see it. You know, I get the opportunity to fight a guy who has a good name, who's a tough opponent, probably one of the better 170s that's not signed to a major promotion. Mm -hmm. So I get the opportunity to go out there and fight against him and, you know, look good against someone like that. And that's obviously going to give me a lot better standing with the UFC and everything else. They're gonna, When they're looking for someone to fight, then... They're going to be looking at me because they're going to be saying, oh, look, he just beat, you know, this good guy. Whereas other guys, if they're not fighting for a title or they're not fighting a tough opponent, they'll look and say, well, he beat this guy, but, you know, who's that? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait for this fight. This is going to be a very entertaining fight and an entertaining card, three title fights. Thank you for the time, David. I really appreciate it. And good luck at Titan FC 39. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for hitting me up. Have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks. So there you have it. That's our show for the week. Thank you for our four guests for joining the show today. Uh, it was a fun show today because we got to talk about a specific event and we get to do the same next week. Why? Because we have two very special guests on next week's show. We have middleweight Elias Theodoro who fights at UFC Ottawa against Sam Alvey. He'll be joining the show as well. We have the main eventer, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He'll be the main guest of the show. That will drop probably next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, but it will be right here on Bloody Elbow on MMA Nation YouTube. You'll be able to find it here. But those two guests for next week's show, that's a glorious show, especially leading up to UFC Ottawa. So thanks for joining us this week. Make sure to subscribe to MMA Nation on YouTube. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. I actually just switched my Twitter handle. It is now MichaelHutch94. Thanks for watching.